This is BBC Two with tips for tenors. Welcome to our second concert, which is all about opera's greatest hit. <clears throat> Louder, louder, girl. Hello! Again, but louder still. Hello! Fantastic. Okay, so are we ready for today's concert? Yeah! Concerts, which is packed with the greatest hits from the world of opera. Absolutely. That was the Orchestra of Scottish Opera, conducted by Christopher Bell, giving us the overture to Carmen, probably the most popular opera in the world. Now, usually when the orchestra play that, they're sitting in the dark in a cramped space under the stage in a theatre. So if they seem to be squinting, it's because we've let them out in the light so that we can hear and see them. Operas <laughs> are basically just like musicals. Stories told with music and songs like Evita or Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Carmen is a brilliant story of passion, jealousy, revenge, murder, love and bullfighting. Do you know it sounds just like Blue Peter? Oh, no, they, no, do, they don't, they don't do, do blue fighting, fighting. They don't, no, they don't. They don't. They don't. Well, the next piece is also from Carmen, because we like it so much. It's the love song sung by the gypsy girl herself, Aww. and it's sent to a lovely slinky dance rhythm from Havana. It's called the Abanera. Do you want to do it? Yeah. OK, everybody, we can all do this together, OK, this rhythm, because it goes like this. Christopher Bell has told me it's big banana. banana. No, but you put it to be really big. Really like big. Big banana. Big banana. Yeah. Big banana. banana. Big banana.
Oh, I enjoyed that. Very nice. The Avenira from Carmen. Sexy Spanish music written by a Frenchman. Really? <laughs> yes, Georges Bizet. Oh, he would have written more, but he was too Bizet. Oh. Boom! Hang on. He's been working on that one oh. all day. Oh, I took me all night for that. <laughs> now, we started with one overture, and here's another. Now, the overture is the beginning of an opera, where you hear all the best bits of what's coming up. It's a bit like a trailer for a new film. Coming soon, Carmen, to a cinema near you. Right at PG. <laughs> <laughs> you right. Yeah. This is the overture to The Thieving Magpie by Rossini. That's one of those operas where the story is just an excuse for some good songs and colourful scenery and costumes. It's about a thieving magpie who steals all sorts of things while a poor little girl gets the blame. Here the part of the cheeky magpie is played by the clarinet and the flute. You'll hear one of Rossini's favourite tricks. The music gets louder and louder and more and more exciting and more into the story. It's what musicians call a crescendo. Rossini did it so often he got a nickname, Signor Crescendo. Is that true? <laughs> it's true, apparently. True? Yeah. Really? Whenever he said something, he said, Could I have a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> right. Signor Crescendo, there he goes. <laughs> so here it is, the thieving magpie. I couldn't take up the flute immediately. I had to play the recorder first. So I was so keen when I got to the flute that I just played it all the time. And the more you play, the better you get. I didn't choose the clarinet. There was a little orchestra at my primary school, and they were just looking for various instruments. Um, and they said, would you want to play the cello or the clarinet? And I thought the clarinet looked a bit less frightening, so I took up the clarinet. One of the commonest things that we clarinet players do is have to play two different clarinets, which are just two inches, maybe, longer. One, one's pitched semitone apart. Uh, from the other, and uh, you can get on the wrong clarinet, especially, especially in a rehearsal. If you're going back, the conductor goes back, and you can't remember which bit you're meant to be on. And the first thing you know about it is you're sort of doing a Laurel and Hardy sketch, you know. <laughs> Thank you. 
been browsing. Did you see the people at the back were giving oh, it? Oh, I, mean, I noticed you up there. Yeah, because yeah, there was a it? chap at the back who was a bit tired when he came. He was like this, and suddenly, whoa! Yeah. When it started getting going. <laughs> Signor Rossini's Thieving Magpie. Now, we couldn't get very far in a programme about opera without music from Italy, the country that invented opera. Ice cream, pasta and pizza. <clears throat> oh, where were we? Oh, yes. And we can't carry on without some singing. Good. Oh. Mm. Oh, 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 I, can't do it. I came over all Matthew costume. Kelly. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> mm. um, no, we couldn't find the, the wig or the costume or anything. Oh, so, so what is Richard going to sing? Well, instead, he's going to sing just for you, Gail, La Donna e Mobile. Oh, that sounds good. What does it mean? It means fickle women. Women are not fickle. Well, uh, well, are we? Are we not? Are we not? Are we? Well, I don't okay, know. Let's go and sort it out. I'll ask my mum. La Should Donna e Mobile, sung by Richard Coxon. Should I phone her a fact? Sempre un amabile, leggiadro viso, impianto in riso e mezzognero. La donna è amabile, qual più mal vento, muta la cento e ripensier. Chi le confina mal caldo il cuore, pur mai non senta si felice a pieno, chi su quel seno non li va amore, la donna è mabile, qual più mal vento. I used to sing when I was um, about five. I used to play the guitar and sing. And I used to go to, uh, on holiday to Labrooks camps and play the guitar and sing and uh, used to enter talent competitions. I sang uh, The Streets of London um, and I sang sort of uh, Annie's song and sort of poppy sort of stuff, you know. I won five, five. I was, uh, you know, it was really tough for mum, mum and dad, you know, because we got free holidays out of it, so it was really good. Five free holidays for a week, you know, it was brilliant. Nerves is always something that um, you've always got to learn to cope with. I was given a little, tiny little teddy badge. When I first started, when I first went to the Royal Northern College of Music, I was given this teddy badge in my first year, and I was doing a competition. I put it in, and I always keep it in my breast pocket, underwear, my mum bought me some really nice underwear and I wear the same type of underwear, you know, for every sort of concert and performance and, you know, so I do have little things that I have to have on me. Yeah. Ness and Dormo has the power to move 
any singer when he sings it and hopefully the audience when he's when they hear it it's beautiful it's got passion emotion and it's got high notes which you know audiences like to hear from a tenor as well and and the, you've got when you've got the orchestra behind you and uh, you know you sort of sing it you you just go on a ride you go through sort of the emotions and you know beautiful by Puccini. Thank you very much, Richard. He's going to be back a wee bit later on. Of course, I remember that that was a hit for Pavarotti during the World Cup in 1990, remember? Yep, and it's music like that that has inspired the Italians to win the World Cup three times, twice more than England. And three times more than Scotland. Uh, it's, uh, oh, watch it. There's more of us. Remember where you are. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> well, even opera singers, with all their years of training, can't sing like that all the way through an opera. Otherwise, they damage their voices and end up sounding like Darth Vader. It's not normal. So most operas have bits where the singers get a rest and the orchestra gets a chance to show off without having to worry about drowning out the singers. Mm -hmm. This is going to be one of those moments. It's a triumphal march from Aida, another of Verdi's greatest hits.
Aida. Music like that paints a picture of a big, important procession, and the brass instruments are really good at doing these big outdoor scenes like marches and battles. Ooh, they really give it some battles. Really does. It shows <laughs> just how music can put across feelings better than just words. When composers want things to sound grand, they use the brass, but they turn to the strings when they want things to sound soft and soppy. Yes. <laughs> Like in this intermezzo from Cavalleria Rusticana by yet another Italian, Mascagni. Poor Mascagni wrote at least a dozen operas, but we only remember him for this one, don't we? Oh, poor Shine. Man. of violin uh, of any string instrument basically as a human voice as a singing that's what that well, that's what I like most about the cello is the sound is the, the quality of the sound at the age of five I was making all sort of squeaking noise just as everybody else but uh, I, I guess I was good uh, as a little boy playing violin it's not as bad as the violin when you start the violin but uh, I guess it took me a while before I we got the hang of it. I wasn't too keen on practicing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the butt of the joke is normally, in the orchestra, is normally the violas. It's a little unfair. It's a kind of nondescript instrument. You've got the violin that has the tunes, and that's play sweetly and high. Then you've got the cello and the basses that play low. And then you've got the viola that's in between. And it doesn't often get a tune, so maybe it's just a bit boring. <laughs> What was the difference between viola and violin? Um, viola, and, oh, it's a really stupid one. Viola burns longer, I think. <laughs> Maybe I got it wrong. <laughs> The other bright idea composers had to give the singers a rest is to put in a bit of dancing. It might get them panting, but at least it doesn't wear out their voices. Operas always used to have a ballet in them, but the more recent one used rather more up-tempo dances. They do. They what? do. Like the twist or the Macarena. Hey, Macarena. No. No? I was thinking more of the can-can. Oh, like that? Yeah. Something okay. like that, Chris.
fantastic. I mean, they were dancing in the aisles. It's fantastic. Offenbach's Can Can. And as I said at the start, there's not really much difference between operas and musicals. The next song is from a modern version of Romeo and Juliet. It's West Side Story by Leonard Bernstein, who wrote all sorts of music for symphonies and concertos and musicals like this one. He did. This is the song that Tony, the Romeo character, sings after he's just met his Juliet, who's called Maria. Sounds a little bit soppy. I hope there's not going to be any kissing. Oh, there's loads of kissing. Uh, no, oh, no, loads no, and loads no. and loads of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the song goes something like, <laughs> Maria, I've just met a girl named Maria. But uh, oh, that was very impressive. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to upstage anyone. <laughs> and I didn't. But uh, <laughs> my name's Gail. OK. Gail Porter, <laughs> I've just met a girl named Gail Porter. Doesn't work, does it? It doesn't work, no. it doesn't work. I'm going to have to work. change my name, do you think? Or we could keep the song and get someone in to sing it properly. I think we should. Do you think we should get Richard back in? Oh, fantastic, what a good idea. <laughs> the most beautiful sound I ever heard. Maria, Maria, Maria. All the beautiful sounds of the world in a sea. Maria, 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 Maria. I've just met a girl named Maria, and suddenly that name will never be the same. Maria, I've just kissed a girl named Maria, and suddenly I found a wonderful song to me. Maria, say it loud and let music play. Say it soft and it's almost like rain, Maria. I'll never stop saying Maria College that I went to was classically trained, so you did your A levels, you did your sort of music A levels, you played the piano, you sang, you had two studies, which um, you know was is something that I think that sort of gives you a really good grounding. And um, I had singing lessons then. For nostalgic reasons, I I still sort of I've kept the tapes, but I listen to them now. And sometimes it's absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're, we're very, very lucky. Opera singers are very lucky, especially sort of male singers. They tend to get to the peak of their careers towards sort of later 30s, 
that sort of is the sort of supposedly the peak of your career. So hopefully I'll get better. As long as I don't do anything silly, you know, sort of doing roles too big for me at, at the wrong time and that kind of thing, because the voice is, is we're like athletes. It's a, it's a muscle in the throat. And if you, if you do something like as a runner, if you run too quick too soon, then you, you pull your muscles and you, you, you're back for a few years. So that's, you know, you've just got to be very careful. When I was singing um, at a concert and uh, I was singing a Neapolitan song and um, when you go for the top note everybody wants to hear it. Uh, it was Torna Suriento and uh, the last bit goes Torna Suriento Fama Campa and the Fama went Fama and cracked. You know, and of course everybody's sort of there with you, and then that last note, you know, sort of cracks, and you um, walk off the stage extremely embarrassed.
with one of the most popular tenor songs ever, O Solo Mio. Mm -hmm. Very oh. popular. I love that one. It's now time for a burst of operetta. Operetta? It just means little opera. So you could be a crisetta. Mm -hmm. And you're a gay letter. Oh. It's a sandwich. Operettas are halfway between grand operas and the musicals we have today. This is the waltz from one of the most famous of all. This is Die Fledermaus. Die Fledermaus. Die Fledermaus. And it's by Johann Strauss II. We could have just done it in English, actually. Why? What's it in English, then? The Bat. The Bat. <laughs> from Die Fledermaus. Mm, now, sadly, it's nearly time to go. Oh. But we'll be back soon with a concert of festive music for Christmas. Hooray! But now I want to go absolutely bonkers. What, totally bonkers? Totally mental chicken oriental. OK, well, can we, got, we? we can. Yes! We can just go. Yes. We've got that. Exactly. Dum -dum 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 you know that, that one? one? William Tell, Overture by Racine. You know that one? Are you going to join in? You do. You yeah. can join in. Yeah. When you're riding a horse and you're a big cowboy, yee-haw! Can I be a cowgirl then? OK, right. you can. Can we have a little practice? Song. One, two, three. Go on, energetic. OK, the William Tell Overture by Rossini. Goodbye, I'm off. Come See on, you let's go. go. Bye -bye.
Okay, we should. Here we go. One, two, and one, two, three, four. Ooh ah, just a little bit. Ooh ah, a little bit more. Ooh ah, just a little bit. I know what you're looking for. Do you know? I think the boy's got it. He's got it. He's going to be a hit. Oh, thanks, guys. Fantastic. Thanks, Richard. That's just.